Last week, we got a look at the hardware that's going to be in the upcoming Xbox One Scorpio that's rumored to come out later this year. The news was broken by Digital Foundry, who gives some fantastic insight about the tech that's in this thing. The only problem is, it makes no fucking sense. So let's break down what's actually going on here and what it all means. The PS4 Pro and the Xbox One Scorpio are both 4K gaming consoles, but the PS4 Pro renders everything at 1080p and then upscales it to 4K. The Xbox Scorpio touts itself as being a true 4K gaming experience. They showed off a Forza demo running at a native 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. My camera can't even do that. It's important to note that Forza is a console exclusive and it's all cars. So this isn't a good representation of how other games could run. Instead, this is a good representation of how developers could squeeze the absolute most out of Scorpio if they have the time and resources. More on that later. Let's get into some of these numbers. The CPU has eight custom cores, so we don't have real benchmarks, but they're all 2.3 gigahertz as opposed to the 2.1 gigahertz that the PS4 Pro has. I feel like processor speed, especially at this small of a difference, means very little. However, it is 31% more powerful than the original Xbox One, so that's something. The GPU is 1,172 megahertz. That's more than any other current gen console. The GPU benchmarks at 40 customized compute units. There's that customized again. If that's to be believed, that's four whole compute units more than the PS4 Pro and a whole lot more compute units than the original Xbox One. The GPU has this thing called a command processor, which Microsoft preloaded with DirectX 12. This means that any games developed with DirectX in mind, mainly games that are popular on the PC, will have an advantage when running on the Xbox Scorpio. This implementation severely cuts down the amount of work that the CPU and the GPU have to do by like thousands of times. Remember how Microsoft was going on about how they've reached six whole teraflops? Well, they're doing that again. The PS4 Pro is four teraflops, which is nothing to snuff at either compared to the sub two teraflops of the vanilla consoles. If you're like me, right now you're probably begging for somebody to just finally explain what a teraflop is. A teraflop is a unit of computing that represents one trillion floating point operations per second. Basically, a teraflop is a unit of measurement that can tell developers how many computations the GPU can do per second. Computers are just really fast calculators. So this calculator can go really fast. The Scorpio can do just about as many teraflops as the GeForce GTX 1070 graphics card, which can do 6.5 teraflops and cost $380. That doesn't sound too good for the price speculations of the Scorpio. Memory bandwidth is the rate that data can be transferred in and out of the RAM by the processor. It's the amount of bandwidth that the memory has. You see, you see, what, I'm, see what I'm getting at? If these benchmarks are to be believed, the memory bandwidth of the Scorpio is light years ahead of the original PS4, the original Xbox One, and even the PS4 Pro. The original PS4 and the PS4 Pro both have 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. This gave the original PS4 an advantage over the original Xbox because that only had 8 gigabytes of DDR3 memory and 32 gigabytes of ES RAM. ES RAM was a small chip specific to the Xbox One that was supposed to be blazing fast. It was meant for game assets that were supposed to be called from RAM fairly often, like the main character's model, or textures like grass that are used often. The only ones who ended up using ES RAM were first party developers because they wanted to get the most out of the Xbox One and no other developers had time for that. This is precisely what made the original Xbox One such a pain in the ass to develop for and why ES RAM was completely scrapped in the Scorpio altogether. Now we're looking at a whopping 12 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, which should be more than enough to compensate. It's important to note that four gigabytes of that will be reserved for the system. Things like the dashboard so that it can be rendered in 4K. This is normal. So with all of that said, yes, the Xbox Scorpio will be the most powerful home console ever. True 4K gaming on your TV. I truly believe that all of this means jack sh 
I'm still not sure who these 4K iterative consoles are for. Microsoft claims that it's for the high-end consumer who has a bit more money, but doesn't want to dump it all into a PC build. I still don't believe that this person exists. If you have the money, why not just spend it on a PC? Especially when the alternative is a Microsoft console whose exclusives also work on PC. Another reason us console users stick to consoles is that we're pretty much guaranteed to have the game run well with minimal effort. Adding more hardware for developers to develop for complicates things. The PS4 Pro isn't selling very well because again, who the f is it for? And because it isn't selling very well, developers aren't developing for it right now. The few games that released patches to utilize the hardware like Final Fantasy XV run like sh I guess we'll have to just wait and see when games start releasing with 4K development in mind, like the new Spider-Man game that's coming out later this year. Microsoft seems to be focusing on making the Scorpio as easy as possible for developers to port games to. This is the smartest of moves. It'll be upscaling games to 4K even if games aren't developed specifically for the hardware. Digital Foundry said that Turn 10 Studios was able to port the whole Forza engine in just two days. With little interest around a higher end current gen gaming console, I don't see developers wanting to sink too much time into something like this. And that's exactly why it's important for Microsoft to make this as easy as possible for developers. As far as we know, the Scorpio is just an iteration of the Xbox One, but there are still rumors that it's an entirely new generation of console altogether. This would make sense, but is highly unlikely. Microsoft is hoping to crush Sony with this hardware. I can almost guarantee that it will sell more than the PS4 Pro. But the vanilla PS4? I don't think this is what's gonna push them over the edge. Microsoft has already been doing really well with the Xbox One S. If anything, that's gonna be their flagship console. So, what do you guys think? How interested are you in the Scorpio? How badly do you need that upgrade for 4K gaming? And how much would you spend on it? Because the rumors are that this thing's gonna be a whole lot of money. People are saying 500, but I'm thinking like six, maybe, possibly. Five would be smart. But six, I mean, this hardware is pretty beefy. Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, all this other social media garbage. The most important things that you can do is subscribe and share this video with a friend, another friend who's into these hardware specs, maybe wants to learn a little bit more about it. Don't forget about Wolf Den Live every single Wednesday where you can talk to us about this kind of stuff, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And here's a video I did a while ago on the PS4 Pro. And here over my dumb face is a playlist where you can watch all of my other videos. Thank you guys very much. Have a good week.